The last time I tried this, my pulley slipped and the turbine detonated in an instant. Something exploded. Yeah, that wasn't great. So this time I'm starting over with a new drive shaft that has room for proper key slots. After broaching both the pulley and the hub to match, there's zero chance of movement under peak load. And though the levers that control blade pitch worked fine when 3D printed, I'm machining new ones from aluminum that should survive when the rest of the assembly fails. Plus, it's high time I made an attempt at a panel for the gauges rather than just letting them hang in a cup holder. People often ask what the police think of turbines strapped to the front of my car, but I figure living this close to Portland, Oregon makes my activities seem pretty normal. What isn't normal is the speed of the turbine we're suddenly getting with zero power output. Turns out a wire came loose, resulting in no electrical connection between the turbine and car. No load means no torque, so the RPM can spike as high as it wants, just as if the pulleys were slipping again. After a quick pit stop to fix loose wire, we're back on the road at highway speeds. But we're still only getting 100 watts when we should be getting several hundred. Fortunately, the turbine simulation software contains a clue. Look how much higher the power gets when we select a higher RPM. Could simply changing a pulley get us more power? I've shown in prior videos that pulley ratios merely swap torque and RPM while power remains constant. But allowing our turbine to get closer to peak performance may give us exactly the boost we need. Lucky for me, I can just 3D print a bigger pulley and like magic, we're back on the road for testing. And guess what? Okay. We are getting more power. Hey, look at that. 140. Nice. It's just about balanced out with the alternator. Oh, really? I saw like 149 on the alternator and then 140 from the... Well, let's fix that. <laughs> Okay, gotcha. So it was dropping the alternator output down to the same amount that was coming in. Is that what you're saying? Okay. But moments later, the power dropped off substantially and never came back. So we're pulling over to take a look. Oh, the belt came off. That could be it. Yeah, that could have a little something to do with it. Oh, loosened up. Okay. That's an easy fix. I guess I need a belt tensioner. Why is that so twisted looking? Is there something else going on? Oh, wow! This is bent. So we're heading back to the shop to beef up the framework and install an even bigger pulley on the generator. I'm also 3D printing a nose cone that I envision sliding right on, but turns out to be sort of a ship in a bottle problem. I got it on there, but we'll want to redesign into multiple parts for the future. But though we're ready for more testing, an ice storm came through town, putting our project on pause until things warm up a bit. A few days later, we're back on the road to find out if our stronger frame and giant pulley can give us any more power. It's kinda working, but also kinda not. So we're pulling over again to check things out. It looks as if our stepper motor isn't actually adjusting blade pitch, so we're turning off the electronics and manually setting it for a return drive home. And we must be doing something right because we set a new record for power output. 1900, 2000 RPM, 167 watts. Ha 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 Okay, so even without any fine tuning, we got over 170 watts, so clearly we went in the right direction with the pulley. But we still need to figure out what went wrong with that stepper motor not controlling the pitch. Plugging it in on the bench, it appears to be randomly cycling back and forth for some reason. That's not what it's supposed to do. After connecting the oscilloscope to verify it's not the controller, my son makes a discovery. That's not supposed to be disconnected. I think we found the problem. After a quick fix with a soldering iron, it appears we're back in business. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Oh! Yo! 
<laughs> there it's working. Back on the road, this time at night, my son adjusts the pitch and sets another new record. We're doing 60. <laughs> I knew we could do it. But not long after, we start getting some terrible vibration. I'm hearing something bad. Looks like we still have the turbine. Because it was getting up to, I heard that uh, this was getting up to 2600. We pull over and find the blade pitch is not at all where it's supposed to be. What position are we at? We are basically at negative, we're, we're past. So we need to turn it, why don't you go ahead and, and power it off. While it's powered off, I'll back the, the uh, mechanics out. Okay, go ahead and turn it back. I've, I've backed it off of the steppers, so go ahead and start it up again. Yes. That's what okay. the line really is. Yes. With the pitch motor freshly right. reset, Let's we're heading home making a second successful run generating over 200 watts. But by the time we arrive, the pitch is again way out of agreement with the set point on our panel. See, that's against the limit switch again. Yeah. It ain't right. Back in the shop, I try pressing on the adjusting linkage to simulate aerodynamic torque on the blades. It does seem to bind up rotation of the shaft, which could be due to the 3D printed trunnion I'm using. So I'm making a new one out of steel, hoping to minimize friction for the stepper motor. Armed with this latest provision, we're heading out for yet another test drive. This time with a little yellow flag of tape on the pitch adjustment to see if it's turning when we tell it to. It's working at first, but as soon as the turbine gets up to speed, the stepper just doesn't have enough torque to overcome the forces on the blades. It's so hard for me to believe we're heading out again that night to give it another try, being very disciplined about when and how much we adjust the pitch. It seems to be working better, decreasing pitch as we watch RPM and power increase. Again, we get over 200 watts with the turbine at just over 3000 RPM. But shortly after, the power drops off and we can't tell why. As you can see from the footage, it's because the turbine mast is twisting in its mount. The only thing keeping it from spinning all the way around is the belt tension but we don't know that until we pull over to take a look. It's twisted. At least it'll be easy to see when that happened. Can I twist it back? <laughs> the forces on this thing are nuts. Back on the road, something isn't right. Looking back, we must have done some damage because the RPM is way off for the pitch. Unsure what to do, we carry on until suddenly, at a much lower RPM than before, we get the most catastrophic failure yet. Oh! Whoa! Holy crap! What? Something hit that. There's no way. No, I. Whoa, it actually broke, I thought it broke my weld, but it broke where the wires were going through. I'd say the belt came off. <laughs> yeah. Inspecting the damage back home, it's hard to find a part that didn't get destroyed. That means I have to rebuild it almost entirely from scratch, except now I've experienced most of the failure points and can design around them. For starters, to save weight, I made tiny aluminum shafts to control pitch and retain the blades. I'm increasing their diameter and machining them from stainless steel. It's much harder on tools, but that tells you something about its strength. 
Also, the originals were starting to wear out the aluminum hub, so I'm adding bronze bushings that will press fit into the hub. And since the ultimate goal is to have two turbines on the car, I'm making a second set of everything to minimize my setups. Now one 3D printed part that never broke is the fork for adjusting pitch of the blades. But since the stepper motor was struggling to adjust it, I'm concerned the whole thing could be flexing with the speed of the blades. To put my mind at ease, I'm redesigning it to be easier to mill from aluminum. It will be one less thing to worry about in future testing. But the biggest change is the electronics. I'm tired of having two makeshift prototype panels and including a second turbine is only going to make things worse. So I found a big piece of acrylic that should fit every display, gauge, and potentiometer we need. But designing and milling it is the easy part. Routing the wiring and soldering the connections has to be done right or we risk burning something up. Also, I'm tired of connecting several little plugs to the car every time we do a test drive, so I'm wiring one big control plug and one big power plug to a relay box on the back of each generator. With it all assembled, I can get my son Grant involved to program everything on a single Arduino. I even got him to help make the fancy cables we need to cleanly connect everything when it's installed in the car. Oh, I also followed through splitting the nose cone into two halves so I don't have to try to assemble the pitch adjustment inside of it anymore. Much, much better. With both turbines assembled, we have high hopes for our first twin turbine test drive. But double the turbines means double the failures, and right off the bat, we stop displaying RPM on the left turbine. Okay, why am I, why do I not have RPM here? Maybe I lost my magnet. I figure the magnet that triggers the tachometer must have come off, which it did. Yep, the magnet's gone. But that doesn't change the function of the turbine, so we decide to push on, keeping an eye on the power output. Next, we start hearing bad vibrations again. You hear that? Yes, I hear that. We pull over and see we're still not maintaining proper pitch of the blades. But I completely miss the fact that the stepper motor on the left turbine has come loose. On the return trip home, the vibration gets so bad you can see the stepper and turbine shaking. What the f That's not good. But I keep thinking it's belt tension or bearing preload and continue to adjust them to no effect. Regardless, we determine in order to maximize power, we need to precisely control blade pitch, and that means changing to a higher torque stepper motor. Thankfully, I'm able to redesign and 3D print the mount to just barely fit the next size larger NEMA 23 stepper. Now I'm extra glad I never saw a reason to machine this part. Just send the revision to the printer and we're good to go. Armed with steppers that should easily set the pitch to whatever we want, we're heading out for another test drive. But even though we ensured everything's nice and tight on both turbines, the left one is still vibrating like last time. I'm hearing vibration already. So we set its pitch to 90 degrees to disable it and focus on testing the turbine on the right. And it doesn't take long to set a new record of 240 watts. 240 watts? <laughs> but just when everything appears to be going great, we get another sudden destruction. Oh, which one was that? It had to have been yours, right? The one yep. on your side? Not knowing what happened, we find a less than ideal spot to pull over. Found it. And strip what's left of our experiment off the car, stuff it in the trunk and head home. And upon reviewing the footage, we can see the turbine somehow topped 3700 RPM before it blew. Oh! Checking the hardware, we quickly determine why. There it is. Look. By hand, I can overdo it. So I guess I didn't tighten that nut enough. Oh, where's a wrench? Oh, man, it wasn't tight at all. There. Guten tight. Investigating the vibration on the other turbine reveals something I did not expect. The thick steel shaft is bent. 
That explains why it was vibrating so badly. Though I've never done anything like this before, I'm able to use a dial indicator on my lathe to bend it back to near perfectly straight. But I also notice the blades now have small cracks at the base. It doesn't look like a big deal, but on subsequent tests, we find vibration that follows the blades when we swap them across hubs. Was that the road, or was that... Uh, I don't know. So I have no choice but to break them the rest of the way and start over. I thought I'd be able to do it with my hands, but turns out I need the leverage of a wrench. Oh! That shows how rigid this Form Labs resin is and how much force it must take for one to fly apart due to excessive RPM. Again, super glad I don't have to machine something with that complex of geometry and can just hit print on a Form 3L. At this point, I'm so anxious about another failure that we're being super cautious. Even though everything is essentially brand new, we stop immediately with just a hint of vibration around 1400 RPM. Yep. We try using a fan with the belt off the generator to simulate it in the shop, but can only get up to 700 RPM. Then I remember these DC generators are basically DC motors. Why not use a bench power supply and drive the turbine like a fan as fast as we want? I get that these aren't designed to be a propeller, but regardless, they move a lot of air. Plus, once we get past 1400, there doesn't seem to be any vibration, so I'm calling it good. Yes, you're scaring me. That's 1500. No grinding, but we are at a different pitch, and we're using it like a fan, not a turbine. All right, shut it down. That's cool. I didn't know I could do that. Makes sense, though. Besides, we've put so much into this project and are so far behind schedule, it's time to just go for it and get some mileage results. In order to get solid, reliable data, I've identified a three mile stretch of relatively flat road and picked an early morning when traffic should be minimal. The plan is to do a few runs east and west without the turbines, do the same thing with turbines, then again without, since the atmospheric conditions will certainly have changed. We're waiting to reset the mileage monitor until we're already cruising to eliminate acceleration from the data set. Since we've had so many failures trying to maximize power, we're starting off with a fairly aggressive 20 degree pitch to ensure we get at least some data before anything fails. But something I hadn't noticed in prior testing is the rear window defrost keeps timing out and switching off on its own. When did that get turned off? I didn't do it. Dang it. Uh, it's worth a couple hundred watts, so any run this happens on is immediate garbage. So we're tossing this first run to the west and starting over heading east. And we get a good clean run with no issues, recording a cruising mileage of 39.4 miles per gallon. Heading west again, we flatten out the pitch a bit to increase power. And it does, getting us up to 232 watts. But then a large semi passes the other direction, sending our right turbine over 3,600 oh, RPM. 3, that truck, there was a semi that came the other way and it just, woof, the turbine took off after that. I, I, I mean, I felt it in the car. This was the first time we've had any opposing traffic in an adjacent lane and never anticipated it being an issue. We quickly verify nothing's damaged, toss the data, and get started with a second run to the east. This time we top 4,100 RPM, still with no damage to our 3D printed blades. Damn, four and less. <laughs> our third run to the west gives another overspeed condition. I'm starting to notice it's doing it each time just over 200 watts. We've either got pulleys slipping on the generator shafts oh, or some electrical issue stuff. limiting current from the turbines right, to the car. The third oh, run to the east two. has us pulling over four times to check overspeed conditions, so naturally that mileage data is also no good. We dial back the turbine pitch a bit, giving us a clean fourth run to the west with no issues. Except then I noticed the rear defrost timed out again, making that data useless as well. Oh, no wonder the mileage is so good.
but thankfully the next two runs, the fourth to the east and the fifth to the west, are both clean with no issues. Determined to get the power far above 200 watts, I start messing with the current limit settings on our DC voltage converters. The up and down directions aren't labeled, so I'm giving the turbine on the right a turn and a half counterclockwise to see what happens. We do see a slight increase to 216 watts before an overspeed condition, which is good, but too small to be significant. So we pull over again, undo that adjustment, and go one and a half turns clockwise. Except now, I kind of wish I hadn't. 27, 30, 30. That's an explosion. The turbine maxes out at a reduced 186 watts, overspeeds, and self-destructs in an instant. Unfortunately, we've been driving so long, my 360 cam already filled its memory card and we don't get to review the video of what happened. But we can clearly hear plastic bouncing off my car and see the aftermath for ourselves. Oh, they both went? Where's our what? Where's our belt? Yeah, where is our belt? That must have been catastrophic. I think I can see why it's why it was wobbly. No kidding. So this one blew and blew that one. Wonder why it went. Ah, all right. And well. This one's all skewed. Yep. This one's really skewed the other way too. Woo! Okay, we'll strip them off. That's not what I was hoping for at all. So unfortunately, with all that went wrong, there wasn't a strong signal one way or the other as to the effect on fuel economy. And go figure, our maximum power was only 372 watts from both turbines, and then it was just for a second. Realistically, we need like 600 watts or more to be sure which way the fuel economy is going. And it didn't help that we had a 200 watt defrost that kept switching off every 15 minutes, which I will definitely remedy in the future. Now, to the people who think it's ridiculous that I'm even trying this experiment, look, I've been a practicing engineer for 24 years with a bunch of patents. I have a long history of doing the math and the simulations and still being surprised by real world results. Do I think the results of this experiment are gonna fly in the face of conventional wisdom? Probably not. But I think the question of how a turbine on a car affects fuel economy is interesting enough. I'm gonna try it anyway. That way the next time someone wonders what a turbine on a car would do, they can watch the video and see the results for themselves. Plus, no matter what, we get to learn a bunch about wind power and electronics along the way. So in my mind, there are no losses. It's kind of like a perpetual knowledge machine. But in order to continue this project, I could use some help. I started YouTube in order to share projects and teach engineering along the way. And luckily, I grew to the point where the ad revenue was actually covering my expenses but I just did my taxes for last year and overall YouTube cost me money. And that's on me. I made content that wasn't as popular and then some life stuff happened that pulled me away from YouTube for a while. Bottom line, if I wanna continue making content, which I do, I need to pivot. I'm still going to be making behind the scenes content for my smaller channel build too, but some of that stuff is gonna to have to go behind a paywall to help grow my dedicated group of patrons. So if you've benefited from my content and want to see more of it in the future, please do consider going to my Patreon page using the link in the description. Like I said before, I got into YouTube because I wanted to educate. That's why most of my videos don't have sponsors. I only wanna advertise things that I believe will truly benefit you. And that's why I'm so excited to have Brilliant as a sponsor of this video. Brilliant is an online learning platform that helps you learn interactively. I love that no matter how much or little I know about a particular topic, I can find content on Brilliant that meets me at my level and helps me advance from there. Plus, there's always new content being offered. For instance, right now, I'm trying a brand new course on large language models. Before the course, I only had a basic understanding, but now I know details about predicting text and how it's affected by the size and type of training data. I also like the convenience of using Brilliant on my phone. Spending a five or 10 minute break learning something cool leaves me feeling better than if I'd spent that time scrolling through social media. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, 
visit brilliant.org forward slash quint builds or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you for considering Brilliant. So the next thing to do is to figure out if that overspinning of the turbine was an electrical issue or a mechanical one. And even though those 3D printed blades held up to over 4,000 RPM, I'm still considering skinning them with carbon fiber to make sure they can't self-destruct no matter what goes wrong mechanically. And just a heads up, I need a break from this wind power stuff, so my next video is going to be something completely different. So be sure to subscribe and click that little bell icon so you'll get a notification when that video publishes. See you then, and thanks for watching.